Do you agree with Mr. Bremlow? Well, the past 200 years, people have been saying, the immigrants we used to get, they were fine folks, good racial stock, well-educated, well-skilled, but the people that are coming now are pure scum. Now, that story has been the same for 200 years. But it didn't fit the facts in the past, and it doesn't fit the facts now. For example, people, Peter says that the skill level has turned downwards. Let's take a look at graph four. And we see the proportion of immigrants and the proportion of natives who have 16 years and more education. And you can see that decade by decade, the proportion of immigrants who have 16 or more years of education has been going up, as with natives. And if you look at chart three, which is the proportion of immigrants and of natives who have very low education, eight years and less, that's been going down decade after decade against common sense, against what you may think when you look on the street. But those are the facts. Similarly, with respect to welfare, people have always said the immigrants are coming here, they're Get on the gravy train. It is not That's true. That's what Prop 187 was about. Yes. But in fact, immigrant families and native families get about the same levels of welfare. But that's not even important because the welfare itself is a very small proportion of what the government gives to people in transfer payments. What's really important is the old age payments, the Social Security and the Medicare. That's really big and the welfare is small. And there, the immigrants do not get Social Security, do not get Medicare, because they come when they're young and strong and healthy. So what are you saying, that, that alienation is based on erroneous data? Yes, sir. I'm afraid so. Well, <laughs> I said I'm afraid so. I said it's based on data prepared by the leading <laughs> scholar in the field, George Borges, the University <laughs> of uh, California, San Diego. And, and uh, I, Julian's just not up to date with the facts uh, here. Peter, and one of the, let me just make two these points. These are as one up to date as could be. No, well, we have an argument about one point in the stage, as you know. And, and, uh, but but uh, the point about, about, about education overall is this. Education is a relative question. It is true that the education levels of immigrants are slowly improving. Although it is also true that 45% of the inflow in the 1980s didn't have high school degrees. Uh, but the point is the Americans' are edu are education levels are improving faster. So the relative gap is widening. And that's a very important question. But that's already a major change from what you say in your book. No, that's no, exactly what I said. Now. John, your book. No, your it book doesn't. Jacket, I, I, you, I, say, I, you, you say, you, and you just said it on the air. You said the skill level has turned downwards. That's not true. It's, 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 sim it's sim turned downwards. It's education is a relative matter. It's turned downwards relative to relative to uh, the, the, that's the not nature you said, born. And even that's not so. It is but true. Let but let me go to the economics for a sec, Charlie, because right. I'm an economist. Peter would prefer there would be fewer immigrants. And he's entitled to that view, whether it's based on what he likes to see in the street or his feeling about the country or anything else. But it's important to understand that if we indulge our taste to have fewer immigrants coming from Asia or any place else, we pay a price in our pockets. Every immigrant who comes on average makes natives richer. And every time we keep an immigrant out on average, we make natives poorer. That doesn't mean that they are necessary, as you put it, Peter. It simply means that if we keep them out, we have less money in our pockets. Well, that, Nothing that, illogical about, about wanting to do that, but, it's, but one must got to recognize that it's a cost, just like when Southern colleges didn't want to have blacks on their, base, on their basketball teams and baseball teams and football teams for decades. They could indulge that taste, well, see, but it meant they lost games. Julian, you're not following through the logic of your own analysis. Those Southern uh, basketball teams absolutely paid a price for not having black basketball players right. on, but that's not the case with immigration. It As is. we said, immigration is not necessary. It doesn't do anything the Americans couldn't do for themselves, whereas the Southern basketball teams absolutely could not do as well without those black, ba black basketball players. We will live very nicely without immigrants, but we will live even more wealthily with them. Well, there's, uh, there's no doubt about, about those facts. Is it necessary or isn't it necessary? That's not a useful well, word. Well, you know, look, look, at, look at Japan, for example. No. And the fact is that the, the Japanese have outstripped American economic performance since 55 by a factor yeah. of five. And they have no immigration at all. So you have, it's clearly not necessary economically. I mean, and the reason for this is that, and all the technical accounting for growth studies confirm it, is that uh, increase in labor and capital together are only minor fraction, fraction of, of, uh, of economic growth. What really counts is innovation. And, that, and, and, and that's absolutely not... not we were uh, talking about the United States, not about Japan. Japan is a whole different complicated case, but it is interesting that now illegal immigrants are flowing into Japan because they find that the labor market demands it.
just the opposite of what people have been saying. There are maybe 200,000 illegals in Japan, and they throw them out as fast as they can. There are over 4.5 million here. The government tries to throw them out. The fact is the the Americans grew faster in the 1950s before when there was no mass immigration than they have done after mass immigration. One important point we should take up also, Charlie, is that Peter says, as some other people, that immigration is at record high levels, as if we are being swamped, and you find the word swamped. It is simply not true. If we look of a percent every year, okay. So the notion that we're being swamped somehow no, see, is contrary to fact. This, let me finish one, can one I point. Oh, well, sure, but let me okay. finish one point. Okay, go. It's Which a long is, point. But then you say, but it's more difficult to assimilate them now. Just the opposite. The richer a country is, Peter, the easier it is to assimilate people. Much Peter. easier now. Okay, well, this is another aspect, frankly, of, of Julian just not being up to speed. I strongly recommend that you read my book on this point. Any demographer would say that y- the important issue, as I mentioned earlier, is not immigration relative to population, but immigration relative to population growth. The big difference between the situation now and the situation in 1900 is that the population was growing very fast through natural increase then. Now it's stagnant. If you're and so interested therefore, in race, the, you're right, Peter. If you're interested in the racial compositions of our population, quite right. We're not having many children. More immigrants mean it changes our complexion, literally. And well, if that's your it, fundamental it, interest, fine. Okay, but, but let's get that on the table. All right. Because race s- suffuses your book. But that is one of your fundamental interests, certainly. is it not? That, that America is, that this country is essentially a... It's been based on a white society, white society with a society, European yeah, sure. immigration sure. policy. I mean, basically, the U.S. is not remotely a multicultural society. Because it is actually, and it always has been, a society based on European values. So you have to ask yourself the question, how can, will these values be sustained when you have a population, uh, substantial a majority of the population, which isn't derived from those but values? There's no issue about values. It's a matter of what you like to okay, see. Okay, stop a second. I mean, you, okay. you agree with him on the point that, in a sense, it will very much change uh, the Our nature of my first question. Uh, if we become less, uh, if, if we have an increased multi-ethnic, multicultural country, we become a different country. Ah, we will look different, yeah. but we will not change our laws, we will not change our politics, we will not change our language, we will not change our festivals. The best example of that is compare Hawaii, that has had a very large proportion of immigration over the past decades, and non-Anglo-Saxon immigration so, to Louisiana. So if America which, which more clearly man? mirrors the world population, if I'm mm-hmm. mixed, then you say, fear not, it's okay, and there's nothing to be Fear not concerned. from the point of view of changes in our institutions. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson was terribly upset about it. If you read you a quote where he talks about the changes in our ways that will come about the immigra- immigrants. Oh, there was they no immigration for 50 years. There was no immigration no. for 50 years but, after the revolution. No. So that, but, you know, but the immigrants who came to have not changed our institutions, they have absorbed ours. They have become more American than the Americans. They, I mean, it's, it's ludicrous that Julian is still giving this example about Louisiana because I pointed out to you the other week the fact that Lu- Louisiana was profoundly influenced by the, the, the Acadian immigration. Of course they were. And, and they did have a permanent effect on it. That's what, why you still find French no, support there. Well, what Let they me give are you one, now one, is due to history, but Hawaii, which has had so much immigration and non-Anglo-Saxon immigration, is as quintessentially Big Mac American as anything could be. Whereas Louisiana